In the post-apocalyptic world of Bird Box, an inexplicable and lethal force triggered by looking at it, wreaks havoc on society. The narrative unfolds through two timelines, the present, where a woman named Mallory Hayes, now a mother, embarks on a perilous river journey with her children, boy and girl. The past reveals how Mallory, Tom, and the others faced a series of life-or-death decisions and encountered fellow survivors, some driven to madness by the entity. The story starts in the present with Mallory, explaining to her kids named boy, and girl, that they can never take off their blindfold, telling them that if they do they die, just like everyone else. The kids anxiously nod yes. Mallory starts packing to get ready for her perilous river journey with her children. Blindfolded, she runs to find the boat and her journey to the rumored safe haven begins. The story cuts back to the past, five years ago, where we meet Jessica, Mallory's sister. While Mallory is engaged in painting, Jessica suggests they tune into the news. The broadcast reveals a disturbing global phenomenon, mass self-deletions originating in Romania have rapidly spread across Europe and Siberia. Despite the unsettling news, Mallory dismisses it, deeming the distant threat inconsequential. The urgency escalates as Mallory recalls a hospital appointment to monitor her pregnancy. Offering her assistance, Jessica accompanies Mallory to the hospital. At the hospital we meet Dr. Lapham, Mallory's obstetrician. After the checkup, an unsettling sight unfolds, a tormented woman inflicts harm upon herself, signaling the encroachment of the European epidemic upon American soil. The ensuing pandemonium compels Mallory to flee the hospital, propelling her into a spiraling chaos. Together with Jessica, they navigate a city unraveling in turmoil, encountering harrowing scenes of devastation. Desperation forces Mallory to coax Jessica to disregard traffic signals, urging her to hasten their escape from the crumbling urban landscape. Their flight is cut short as Jessica becomes ensnared in an inexplicable trance, precipitating a cataclysmic accident. Mallory's world shatters as she grapples with the sudden loss of her sister, a casualty of both possession and collision. Mallory has no time to process her now dead sister as explosions and more chaos unfolds around her. Running to safety she stumbles as people keep bumping into her. A stranger extends a helping hand, guiding Mallory to shelter, a momentary respite from the surrounding anarchy. Unfortunately, this semblance of salvation is fleeting, as the stranger becomes a grim victim of the insidious creatures that stalk the world. As Mallory enters inside with the help of another person, named Tom, we meet the group of people they are going to be stuck with for the next couple of days. Greg the owner of the house, his friend Douglas, Felix, Lucy, Charlie, Cheryl, and a couple of others. They all discuss what is happening outside. A grocery store worker Charlie theorizes it's the end of the world. As the group slowly gets to know each other, the story cuts back to the present, where Mallory's river journey is fraught with challenges. She has been navigating treacherous waters for six hours now, all to secure a future for her children. She tries to find help on her walkie-talkie and hopes someone is nearby. But all she hears is the invisible creatures whispering her name. Returning to the past, the group's dynamic is further enriched as a pregnant stranger named Olympia seeks refuge. Convincing a reluctant Douglas, the group extends a lifeline to Olympia, further complicating their fragile equilibrium. Later, Greg comes with an idea to inspect the security cameras at his house to find out what is happening outside. The group is skeptical about the idea but eventually agree. The others help secure Greg to his office chair in hopes he doesn't hurt himself when it goes wrong. The others leave Greg and come back later as they hear loud bangs coming from upstairs. Everyone rushes to the second floor to see what's going on. They find Greg laying in his own pool of blood. Everyone is shocked to have lost a member of the group. Now they realize that the invisible creature can also possess you through screens, so they destroy the computer. In the present time, the family finds themselves navigating the river for a continuous stretch of 14 hours. Abruptly, Mallory becomes attuned to a male voice echoing through the air, urging the removal of blindfolds. Cognizant of the potential danger, she swiftly instructs her children to maintain a low profile and steadfastly retain their blindfolds. Gradually, the voice edges closer, accompanied by promises of sustenance and remarkable encounters with the elusive invisible creatures, described in amiable terms. As the voice advances, an unforeseen assault unfolds, a sudden lunge towards the boat thrusts Mallory into a confrontation. Aggression escalates into a harrowing struggle, as Mallory's resolute defense seeks to safeguard her children and herself. In a climactic battle, Mallory seizes a machete strategically placed on the vessel, unleashing a series of decisive blows that prove effective. With determination as their shield, the family emerges from the turmoil unscathed, having fended off the assailant's vicious assault. Back to the past, the narrative weaves a tapestry of resourcefulness as the group embarks on a quest for supplies. Their plan is to cover Greg's car windows and blindly drive to the store relying on the car's GPS. 
On the road, they struggle to get past the dead bodies and broken vehicles. As they continue driving, their journey is haunted by the shadows of the invisible creatures, a testament to the omnipresent danger. Somehow Tom still manages to get the group safely into the store. Their arrival at a supermarket promises respite, as they scavenge for essentials and encounter pet birds, an unforeseen source of solace for Mallory. The group is almost done scavenging when suddenly, they hear a man who is stuck in the loading docks of the supermarket. The man claims to be trapped in there for days without food or water. Tom and the others buy his story except Douglas. When they open the door the man changes his behavior and becomes violent, trying to let him and the creatures in. As Tom and the others attempt to block his entry, the man's overpowering strength prevails, breaching their defenses. Charlie notices the imminent threat and selflessly sacrifices himself to ensure the safety of the group. That night, a disheartening discovery awaits Douglas and Mallory as they investigate a noise from the garage, Felix and his girlfriend Lucy have absconded with the sole working vehicle, leaving behind a palpable sense of betrayal. Back in the present, the family has spent 24 hours on the river. Mallory's exhaustion reaches a breaking point, leading to her boat inadvertently colliding with an abandoned truck. As a consequence, the boy loses his balance and plunges into the river, taking their supplies with him. A stroke of luck favors them as Mallory swiftly rescues the boy and steers the boat towards a nearby shore. Cautioning the children to remain where they are, Mallory ventures into the woods to scavenge for essential items, utilizing a sturdy rope as her guide. Her search leads her to an abandoned hospital, where she manages to gather provisions and clothing. Rushing out of the building, a chilling voice whispers her name, a haunting reminder of the invisible threat that looms. Meanwhile, back at the shore, restlessness grips the little girl as the passage of time raises her anxiety. Disregarding Mallory's instructions, she sets off into the forest to search for her mother. Bound by a blindfold, she journeys deeper into the woods, only to be ensnared by the sinister whispers of the enigmatic creature. Tempted by its voice, she contemplates removing her blindfold and glimpsing the vibrant world around her. In a critical moment, just as the girl is on the brink of yielding, Mallory arrives in the nick of time. Swift and determined, she pulls her daughter away from the precipice, their bond stronger than the alluring calls of the entity. Reunited on the boat, the trio resumes their journey, their determination unshaken by the close encounter with the invisible menace. Returning to the past, a pivotal moment unfolds. Olympia's decision to admit a suspicious-looking man named Gary into the house triggers a storm of anger and apprehension among the group. Discontent ripples through the survivors, questioning Olympia's judgment in making such a significant choice independently. Yet, with a sense of responsibility, they assess Gary's demeanor and ultimately permit his presence. Over time, he reveals a startling revelation, he claims to have encountered individuals outside who defy the conventional survival methods. These outsiders have seemingly forged a precarious coexistence with the invisible entities, all while not wearing blindfolds. Amid the growing trust in Gary's account, one figure remains steadfastly skeptical, the pragmatic Douglas. Armed with a shotgun and unwavering skepticism, he confronts Gary, insisting on his departure. However, the situation takes a swift turn when Cheryl, Greg's mother, intervenes with a swift and stunning blow, rendering Douglas unconscious. The group collectively decides to confine him in the garage, isolating the voice of reason whose doubts threaten to unravel their newfound unity. In the aftermath of the turmoil, Olympia extends a heartfelt apology for the upheaval she inadvertently caused. Her remorse weighs heavily, casting her as a burden upon the group. Yet, in a touching exchange, Mallory extends her reassurance, affirming that Olympia's actions were born of compassion and goodwill. As the two pregnant women share a poignant moment of connection, they forge a pact to safeguard each other's children in the tragic event of one of their demises, a solemn commitment that underscores the depth of their solidarity. In a touching gesture of camaraderie, Mallory presents Olympia with a Hello Kitty toy, a symbolic gesture of hope and unity. In the present, the young girl clutches the same toy, a poignant confirmation of her identity as Olympia's daughter. Mallory envelopes herself in a blanket, a shield against the impending challenges as they draw near to the tumultuous rapids. Her voice, a blend of determination and caution, reverberates as she imparts a grim reality. The impending passage through the rapids will constitute the apex of danger in their arduous journey. A weighty decision looms. Navigating the treacherous waters demands that one of them cast aside their blindfold and assume the role of navigator. The innocent children, driven by bravery and a desire to contribute, both express their willingness to step forward. Yet, Mallory is ensnared in a dilemma, her maternal instincts refusing to relinquish the safety of either child. In a poignant moment of contemplation, she arrives at a resolution, a testament to her unwavering determination to safeguard both lives. Ultimately, a plan materializes, one devoid of sight. As the boat hurtles through the unforgiving rapids, they collectively surrender their fate to the hands of destiny. Each determined not to let the absence of sight define the boundaries of their courage. 
back in the past. Simultaneously, the hands of fate deal a peculiar twist, both Mallory and Olympia find themselves in the throes of labor, their struggles unfolding in tandem. Upstairs, Tom and Cheryl stand as steadfast pillars of support, offering solace and assistance to the women as they navigate the delicate precipice of childbirth. Meanwhile, a disconcerting undercurrent simmers below, as the enigmatic Gary reveals his unsettling proclivities. In the dim recesses of the house, Gary's intentions unfurl in a disturbing tableau. He unveils a macabre collection of drawings, a chilling testament to his possession by the malevolent forces that loom unseen. It becomes chillingly clear that Gary, one of the few heralds of the invisible entities, harbors an insidious agenda, to infiltrate their sanctuary and unleash chaos upon the group. His first nefarious act is to neutralize Mallory's vigilant sentinels, the birds, by imprisoning them within the confines of the refrigerator, silencing their warning cries. Unfurling his sinister machinations further, Gary methodically strips the window of its newspapers, casting aside their defense against the enigmatic threat that besieges them. Amidst this palpable tension, Olympia triumphs over the agony of labor, ushering new life into the world with the birth of her daughter. Simultaneously, Mallory's labor culminates in the birth of her son, a brief moment of jubilation that pierces through the pervasive darkness. Yet, as swiftly as joy emerges, a sinister specter looms on the horizon. Gary, an embodiment of malevolence, shatters the fragile cocoon of happiness, intruding upon the birthing room. With a sinister flourish, he yanks open the window shades, a calculated gambit to plunge their lives into perilous jeopardy. Mallory instinctively averts her gaze, but Olympia, tragically, falls victim to the malevolent force, her very being seized by an otherworldly possession. Driven to the brink by the alien influence, Olympia takes a heart-wrenching plunge from the window, an act of unfathomable despair. But before she does, she bequeaths her daughter into Mallory's trembling arms, a poignant testament to maternal sacrifice. The unforgiving grip of possession extends its reach to claim another victim, Cheryl. The elderly figure of resilience, succumbs to the same tragic fate, her sacrifice a testament to the relentless cruelty of the unseen menace. Amidst the chaos, a defiant figure emerges, Douglas, armed with a shotgun, confronts Gary in a blistering clash. The ensuing struggle is a visceral testament to the stakes that bind them. In the tumultuous fray, Douglas meets his demise, a martyr for the cause. Salvation, however, arrives in the form of Tom, who, despite his weakened state, musters the strength to extinguish Gary's malevolence, securing a hard-fought victory. In the aftermath of the harrowing ordeal, the battlefield of their sanctuary is strewn with both triumph and tragedy. Tom, Mallory, and the children remain as the sole survivors, a testament to their resilience and unwavering determination to survive against insurmountable odds. Half a decade elapses, a span that sees the quartet ensconced within a secluded woodland dwelling. Amidst the sylvan embrace, even the avian companions thrive, a testament to the sheltered haven they've cultivated. Escaping the clutches of urban malevolence, the children acclimatize to their idyllic surroundings, although their names remain a lingering omission. Tom, ever the pragmatic voice, questions the absence of names, an observation Mallory deflects, deeming it a tertiary concern in their battle for survival. In a singular instant, a haunting revelation jolts their sanctuary. Echoes of the past resurface in the form of infected souls piloting vehicles, their ominous presence a disconcerting harbinger. The realization dawns upon them, no bastion is impervious to the encroaching danger. As the night descends, Mallory's walkie-talkie, dormant until now, springs to life, forging a connection to the unknown. A voice, identified as Rick, speaks from the void, unveiling the existence of a secure bastion laden with provisions. The road to this sanctuary, however, is riddled with peril, a daunting river journey beset by rapids and treacherous currents. Rick underscores two unwavering truths, the river is a perilous terrain unfit for children, and the enigmatic birds hold the key to finding the sanctuary. Morning brings contemplation, as Tom's yearning for the compound, encounters Mallory's skepticism, the specter of Gary's betrayal still haunting her. A divergence of opinions ensues, Tom's inclination leans toward the venture, a leap of faith, while Mallory remains tethered to caution, her trust punctured by past deceptions. In the midst of their deliberations, the lurking threat resurfaces. Infected figures materialize, accelerating their reckoning. Swift and resolute, Tom urges Mallory to shepherd the children to safety, his resolve undiminished even as his heart wrenches at the prospect of parting. A somber agreement is struck, Mallory collects their meager possessions, her grip on the children unyielding, as Tom readies himself for a desperate confrontation. As Mallory and the children flee through the shadows, Tom marshals his resolve to confront the encroaching horde. Bolstered by unrelenting determination, he wages a visceral battle, a symphony of gunshots punctuating the night. However, fate is a capricious companion, while poised on the precipice of victory, a bullet finds its mark, felling Tom. Amidst a deluge of adversaries, Tom makes a harrowing decision, 
to cast aside his blindfold, to confront the threat unshackled by the veil of darkness. In an instant, Tom's transformation is chillingly unveiled, his very essence contorted into a monstrous entity that inexorably eradicates the infected, each met with inexorable finality. Yet, as the climax unfolds, the malevolent presence reveals itself to Tom, coercing him to commit the unthinkable, an act of unspeakable horror that blurs the line between humanity and monstrosity. Meanwhile, Mallory and the children find solace within their haven, as she unspools the tale of their journey, an odyssey marked by sacrifice, resilience, and the unyielding hope that propels them forward. In the unfolding present, an arduous journey spanning 42 relentless hours has culminated in a treacherous confrontation with the unforgiving rapids. Mallory, undeterred by the ominous challenge, steers the vessel through the tumultuous waves. Yet, the unyielding force of the water proves insurmountable, capsizing the boat and plunging its occupants into the chaotic maelstrom. With instinctive resolve, Mallory clings to her children, steering them to the safety of the shoreline, emerging from the tempest unscathed. In the aftermath, the trio embarks on a tentative odyssey through the dense woods, their path a testament to their relentless tenacity. The very fabric of reality wavers as the enigmatic presence materializes, endeavoring to breach the fortified resolve of Mallory and her children. Undaunted by its insidious allure, they remain steadfast, foregoing the temptation to unveil their vulnerability by eschewing their blindfolds. Instead, the ethereal harmonies of the birds guide their footsteps, a beacon that guides them toward an elusive sanctuary. Their arduous journey reaches its zenith as they arrive at a sprawling compound, its imposing gates guarding a haven untouched by the malevolent forces that ravaged the world. Mallory's desperation takes center stage as she pounds on the door, a frenzied plea that is met with a glimmer of hope as it creaks open, permitting their entry, albeit under the scrutinous gaze of those within. Only upon confirming their uninfected status are they granted access to the refuge. Within the confines of the compound, a long-awaited encounter awaits, the enigmatic figure named Rick steps forward, a harbinger of answers within the enigma. He unravels the compound's storied history, recounting its origin as a sanctuary designed for the blind. This very attribute, the absence of sight, became their impervious shield against the invasive malevolence that claimed the outside world. Among the welcoming faces stands Dr. Lapham, whose affable presence embodies a semblance of normalcy. Dr. Lapham extends a heartfelt welcome, acknowledging the children's undeniable charm. In a profound exchange, she inquires about their names, a seemingly mundane gesture laden with significance. Mallory, after a thoughtful pause, finds herself embracing the precious gift of identity, bestowing upon her children names that encapsulate their journey and embody their resilience, Olympia and Tom. As the narrative thread concludes, Mallory's grasp on the bird box, bearing testament to their guiding companions, loosens, allowing the avian emissaries of hope to take flight once more. The final frames of the story are punctuated by the resonant melodies of the birds, a testament to the enduring spirit that triumphs over adversity, reaffirming the unyielding power of hope even in the face of insurmountable darkness. And there you have it, the encapsulation of Bird Box, if you enjoyed this recap, stay connected for more captivating narratives, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a like to support our channel, your engagement is truly appreciated, thanks for watching.